Mr. Banks, what's happening, buddy? How you feeling today? Doing good. How are you guys doing? We are doing good. well. The uh, the good feels, I guess they're not fully worn off after the loss of the Cowboys on Monday night. But the one thing that was the most concerning was how much pressure Daniel Jones was under. And some of it is forgivable. I mean, Evan Neal has bad feet. And I'm sure you saw this plenty. He gave up four of those mm-hmm. five sacks. But is there any way that you – how do you mitigate that? You probably could tell me better since you've had to direct those guys and how they do it. But I just think for Evan Neal, the first two games weren't bad. He just drew a bad card as a rookie because he's got um, Demarcus Lawrence Mm -hmm. and he's got Micah Parsons. So you're baptized in fire. (laughs) So it's it really comes down to how he responds the next game as to whether or not he's been affected. But I thought he had shown progress uh, the first two games. There are a few realities, though. When you talk about the, the, the good feels, we have to manage expectations when it comes to this giant football team. Mm-hmm. They, they are not this season away from competing for a Super Bowl and maybe not even competing for the playoffs. The expectation should be improvement uh they don't have uh a roster full of talent and you could tell that there's a a lack of talent by the lack of depth that they have and it's it's reflected every week in special teams yeah when you have bad special teams that means that your frontline players should probably be your special teams players and somebody better than them right so um they are they are in a rebuild. It, it's not it's not one of these deals where you're going to say, well, you know, one or two play players away. They are more than one or two players away. Currently, as constructed, they don't even have a wide receiver healthy that can get any separation. Mm-hmm. I mean, that would help your pass rush a little bit. It would help your running game a little bit. If you had a guy who could get some separation, it's just like. They're all guys, and that puts a lot of a lot of stress on your play callers. Yeah, no, it definitely because you got to scheme everything. No, that's right. You can't you can't rely on the skill to to win. Mm-hmm. You have to use scheme to win. And I got to give Mike Kafka a lot of credit because he did that early, like a couple of the passes sure. to Bellinger and things of that nature. I've been saying the same thing, Carl. Like as a Giant fan, you can't count the wins this year. You can't say, oh, it's about winning and losing. It's more about the process. And Coach Dable has even said that. The, ch- the only thing, it really the only person it's unfair to is Daniel Jones because he's being evaluated with an incomplete product around sure. him. And sure. And 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 I, I like we like Daniel. We've talked about him a lot. We had him we met him. He's a cool kid. He's I think he's got the calmness. But I mean is it fair to him that he's being evaluated on a team that's not really equipped to be anything other than what it is? Well there there are probably several benchmarks that he has to hit in terms of his own personal evaluation. I think he's doing that. There are a few things that we we've seen. His ball security is appreciably um, improved. That's noticeable. Uh, his decision making has been good. His leadership, like Monday night, I, I, you can ask more from the quarterback. I mean, he he kept plays alive. He did. He was very resourceful. Took some shots too, but. You know, I think he played his butt off, and I think his teammates, you know, you you listen to them after the game, and they say they let him down because he was really – he was out there, you know, he was balling out, trying to anyway, but there's only so much you can do. Mm-hmm. So we're talking to Carl Banks. Now, Carl, the, the Giants are three-point favorites over the Bears coming up uh, this weekend at MetLife, and whether or not they win or not, we'll see. I, I think they I think they have a really good chance to uh, win ugly, but – Let's say win or lose, we get a little deeper in the season. Saquon continues to show that he's got this burst and this this revitalization to his body, but the Giants stop winning, and maybe the tone changes a bit. Though I agree, there's not a lot of talent. But if you win games, you're still in it. If people start calling for trades about Saquon Barkley, how receptive should Joe Shane be to trading him? Well, if you're losing and your team's not going to get better with a trade, 
then you're better off keeping him. I mean, look, they're in the business of improving this this roster. Uh, they're rebuilding the culture of the team. So, I again, I'm not qualified, you know, because I'm not in, in Joe Shane's head. But if he's playing well, then let him play well for you. You know, don't pull the plug and tell everybody, hey, look, we're going to give our best guys a chance to win and we're going to bring in a nobody and tank the rest of the season. I, I just think that sends the wrong message. Oh, I, I got you, and I respect that. And I can see why maybe as a former player and inside the locker room, that would be construed differently than somebody like me who's an outsider, admittedly. But, you know, macro view of the Giants, they, they are there's just a dearth of talent. I mean, everybody knows that, which is why I think we're so – we respect the start because they're playing hard, probably overachieving. But this team is not built to win anything. We know that. And because there's now, and because there's so many holes, they don't have really anything that getting back real trade equity or draft equity, pardon me, for Saquon, to me, that might actually be the winning move down the road when they're actually ready to win. No? So you're not wrong, but again... If your if your message is shifting the culture, mm-hmm. um, and he's part of your leadership, and he's part of the culture, are you you're not better without him? You could be better with him. And here's the thing: when you have enough fights in your weight class, then you got a chance to win. You got a chance to win seven or eight games. That's a step in a positive direction, and that could either mean Saquon has been a major contributor to that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it may mean he may be part of the future because his his ticket is not going to be too high because running backs are not going to make the type of money that the quarterbacks are asking yeah, for. Yeah, you're right. The franchise um, number is under $10 million, to your point, Carl. Right. Right. So you want a guy like him to be part of your franchise. Not, I mean, he's he does everything right. He's a great guy. He's a great leader. But he's a hell of a player, too. Like, if you got that already squared away, then that's one less thing you got to worry about in the offseason in terms of a running back. But, you know, if you're a team that's in flux and you just are trying, you're grasping at straws, trying to figure out how can I calm, how can I tame the populace that's calling for our heads, they don't have that situation right now. They are in, they have a clean slate. Uh, I think the fans are appreciating what they're doing thus far. Yeah. And, you know, they just, we're looking for improvement. Like a two and all was a two and all start, but we knew that it was, most people knew that it wasn't going to stay that way, but yeah. you know, the giants will tell you, um, Brian Dable will say to you, we want to keep it ugly, get into the fourth quarter and see if the other team can swim in the deep end. Mm-hmm. They just, they'll win ugly as any kind of way. They can, but, you know, having 10 guys on the goal line against the Dallas Cowboys doesn't get it done. Yeah. Right. You miss, you you know, th- those are the little things they're worried about right now, as opposed to trading a guy who keeps you in every game. You you don't want to trade um, Saquon if he's keeping you in every game. And these are fights in their weight class. So these are, you know, the Dallas Cowboys. Yes, they had better talent. Did the Giants have opportunities? Yes, but they're not good enough to overcome their mistakes yet. Yeah, no, they that, just don't have enough. Time. That's a great way to put it. They're not good enough to overcome mistakes. Some, some re- the really good teams they can make some mistakes and still win sure. or almost win. The the Giants aren't quite there yet. Uh, last one before we let you go here, Carl. The Kenny Galladay situation is really interesting. I'm I'm interested to see how it plays out. I'm interested to get your thoughts. I mean, David Sills is playing 72 percent of the snaps, and you know Richie James he's getting a lot of burn. Kenny Galladay is not. But with Sterling Shepard down. How do you see this playing out for, for Kenny Galladay? Hey, I mean, it's the old game show. This is your life. Like, you're up now, Kenny. You've always been up. But here's one more chance to, you know, make an impression on this coaching staff. But I suspect it'll probably end up being someone like um, Slayton who gets the bigger opportunity because he actually is faster. He's the fastest guy left Yeah, that's healthy. Um, and they definitely need some separation. So I, I don't know. It's an it, you know, it's just an odd situation with Kenny. He's got to catch the ball as they throw to him. Obviously, the more they throw to him, I guess the more he'll catch. But you know, in games like Monday night, he had two that he should have made catches on. Yeah. 
All right, Carl. So uh, let's Thank see. You. Yeah, we'll listen to you Sunday against the Bears. Bring home a dub at Super Bowl champ Carl Banks. Appreciate it, dude. Thank, Thank you very you, Carl. much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, Carl Banks on the Fantiki and Tierney, 877-337-6666. <laughs> 